at the end of this video, you'll be able to make art like this. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Jolly Franchers YouTube channel. We are a, a small group of people making a video game called The Kid Detective. I'm the pink Jolly Francher. Strawberry. Um, and I thought that on this channel we could share a little bit about how we're making the game. There's lots of different uh, parts of making a game. Art, animation, music, uh, coding, visual coding. Today I'll show you a little bit about my art process. Nine months ago I hadn't done any digital art. I had no experience with animation whatsoever and I downloaded a free program called GIMP and uh, started making pixel art on it. And because I wanted to make large characters, sort of in the style of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Kid Detective, they're both detective games. So I was interested in creating these really detailed characters with a lot of expression. And since I have a background in acting and I have a lot of acting friends, I thought, what better way for me with minimal art background to use these reference pictures from my actor friends and make some good art. So let's get into it. Okay, so to start with in GIMP, we are going to create a new file. Uh, for whatever reason, when I started, I started making pixel art at this resolution, but it can really be whatever you want. Um, the smaller you make this, the simpler and more precise you'll have to be with where you place your pixels. And the larger you make this, well, uh, the more work it's going to be, as maybe we'll find out. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new layer to draw on. Um, I want this layer to be transparent because I, uh, I want to be able to place my character anywhere and not have a giant white background behind them at all times. And today I am going to go to open as layers to open my reference picture for this art today. As you can see, this picture is much bigger than the 500 by 288 resolution. I'm going to go up to layer and scale the layer. And I'm going to scale it to, at first I'm going to try 500 by 288. I'm actually going to let it do this automatically because if I force it to go to 288, it's going to sort of warp the picture. And I don't want that. I want it to look just like this sweet boy here. So here you'll notice I'm using the pencil tool instead of the brush tool. And that's because the pencil tool, uh, if it's not here in your selection of tools, you can always go to tools, paint tools, pencil. And I'm going to choose the pixel one. And if I use the brush, it, it wouldn't give me precise pixels. It would blur the edges around the line. And I want uh, really precise control over what I'm drawing and where I'm placing the pixels. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in on this boy and start outlining him in black line art. And if you press shift, it will draw a straight line from wherever you last drew a pixel. It's a really handy tool for outlining. And I'm just going to uh, fast forward. I will have line art, line arted this whole boy. Zoop. Okay, so now you can see that I have finished with the basic outline of the boy. You can see it better against the white background. What I've liked to do for my characters is uh, I put just an accent at sort of the Cupid's bow, and I like to put one underneath as well. It's, it's a sort of a style I picked up from you know, cartoons that I like. The way I do the nose is usually I, you know, just put a line where I see most of the nostril is, and then I outline the outside of the nostrils, like so. 
So yeah, this part is up to taste. Sometimes I like to do uh, just the top lid of the eyelid in black pencil art. And then I fill in the underside with sort of skin color. Uh, but for some characters, I don't. And um, that's just sort of up to you and whatever vibe the specific character gives you. Oh, let me clap. Okay, so at this point, I've drawn the line art for the face. And now it's time to color. <laughs> Here you can see I've got a sprite sheet of pictures of the main character, KD. And I like to keep things uh, pretty simple and, you know, take the color that I used for one picture, uh, use it for another. Uh, it's sort of like a pixel art, keep the amount of colors you use limited. In this case, I'm going to steal the skin color of KD for this other little white boy and I'm just going to plop it on. I'm using the color picker tool. Uh, once again, if you don't see the color pickle, picker, <laughs> pickle tool here, you can go into your tools, choose pickle tools, and there's the color picker. Then I'm going to steal, I, I use for each person like a light skin tone, a darker skin tone, and like a highlight skin tone. We all sort of just have like a range of skin tones on our face, shadows, what have you. So now you can see the boy has a horrible mask on. <laughs> and uh, while that's beautiful, you probably want to move this layer down so you can see the sort of distinctive shape of the boy's lip. It allows me, especially with my line drawing tool, to tell exactly where I'm drawing the lines, um, even though I'm not looking at my layer anymore where I drew the line art. This will still be a very helpful guide when I go back in. So yeah, I, I like to fill in the lips with sort of the darker skin color here. I'm uh, done with the lips for now. What I like to do here is something that I've seen done in anime. Draw a little under the lip shadow. You can see it here in this actual photo. Um, it just, it gives a little bit of dimension to the sort of flat face that you're drawing. Now that I'm done with the lips, I'm going to start shading the boy's nose uh, somewhat in accordance with the boy's real nose. But some just sort of going off of my favorite cartoon characterizations and, and how they draw. Um, I like a little under nose shadow, just sort of further drawing out and giving a little bit of attention to the cupid's bow in general. I think some people have a lot of character here. Uh, also, this boy has some dimples, and I think we should maybe go into that a touch. Because um, there's, there's some sort of sassy dimples. I like the way the nose looks. Um, and to give it a little bit more dimension, I like to do a side of the nose shadow. Noses, I find, are, are very difficult in this method. Sometimes they don't come off quite right because the edges of a nose aren't maybe as well defined as like an eye or a mouth. Generally in pictures, there's, there's a lot of subtlety in like the shading of a nose that is difficult to capture with just three tones. I'm gonna reference the boy's real life nose and I'm gonna do a little highlighting where the light falls. So I'm gonna go in with the same white color using my color pickle and I am going to color in the whites of this boy's eyes. It's not all going to be white in the end, because you'll find if you color the whole white of the eye in white, the character looks very uh, s spooky, like they're staring daggers into you. Uh, and you might want that, you know? If you're, make if you're having a scary moment in your game and, and you want someone to really be staring bullets, at you, uh, I think it could be very effective if you just don't shade up here. <laughs> but I'm gonna shade up there. I use a sort of gray. I, I literally go to the color and I slide it down a little bit to gray to have that shadowed effect on the white. But I'm gonna steal the exact color from what I've already done. Uh, it's, it's kind of a brownish gray. I'm going to 
go ahead and take that gray color and start shadowing the eyes just underneath the lid. The boy has black eyes because the boy the boy pretty much does have some black eyes in this photo. Okay, so the boy has some shine in his eyes. This is sort of a classic cartoon trope and it definitely gives like a solid black eye a little bit of like the shiny puppy dog thing that it really does uh, have in real life. I'm going to uh, get his ear, all the ear nooks and crannies with the darker color. And I'm going to go ahead and color in things that I have missed, like the boy's ear over here. Going to make sure to make it skin, make all things that are skin colored, skin colored in this moment. Uh, and now we're going to finish with our darker color. I'm going to shadow the parts of the boy's head that uh, would probably be, you know, a little bit shadowed or blended with the hairline. And to finish with the shadows, we're going to do a nice under chin shadow just so we can get the depth of the face to the neck. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and color the boy's shirt blue. I'm going to uh, color this boy's hair. The way that I got these colors is I color picked on the actual picture of the child itself. That's starting to look more like a person except with a haunting empty mouth. <coughs> so let's get in there with the teeth. And this boy has a nice white mouth of teeth. I don't really see any gums present. So I'm just going to go all white right now and go in with our white shadow, same one we used in the eyes. And just sort of where I see differentiation between teeth, I'm going to put in some gray. And then I think I'm going to black the corners because uh, they, get, they get pretty dark near the edges you know, where the teeth go back into the mouth. And then I think I'm going to do a little bit of shadow under this top lip because I see it as sort of a, a pretty consistent thing in the reference photo. For now, well, all we really have left to do is the darker parts of the hair. So let me grab that color. Something that I've done before is you can come up here to the fuzzy select tool, this lovely wand, and if you click uh, where there are dark parts in the boy's actual hair, it selects. And if you press shift as you select more, those dark parts will start to accumulate. And then if I go back to the old layer and I have my color, I, actually I'm going to make a new layer to apply this to because I don't, I don't want to accidentally mess up this layer. So I'm going to take my bucket fill and fill in the fuzzy select on this layer. And then I'm going to unselect so that I can see what happened. It's kind of modeled. I think if we went in closer, we would see that uh, the bucket fill sort of automatically creates a bit of like translucency. And so it doesn't keep the color very clean. If you use the bucket fill on it again, it fills in so that it's all one uniform color. Uh, this is just a, a personal taste thing. It's something that people tell you about pixel art is to, you know, use few colors. So I'm just going in here cleaning up the edges where the top layer uh, painted over my line art. Another way to do this is to just go in the base photograph. And where you see a dark part, you just go in with your pencil you make sure your layer is selected and you trace the dark part, fill it in, trace the dark part, fill it in. It's very meticulous, but it ends up with a pretty nice result, I think. I might just make the boy's part here a little more apparent and I'm going to go in and sort of shape this as I see fit. Once I am satisfied with how the hair looks, I'm just gonna merge the layers uh, together I'm going to select the layer I want to merge down, and now they're on the same layer. I'm going to color in the boy's eyebrows, uh, sort of the lighter color is what I decided. 
And this, for all intents and purposes, this is how you make the, you know, a base character before you animate it. Next time, I'm going to show you uh, what I do to make sort of uh, base the most basic animations, mouth moving, uh, eyes blinking, and how to set them up in Unity, uh, and how to make this boy come to life. Hello, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to see more or if you have any uh, questions about what other kinds of videos you want to make, what you want to hear about the game, uh, please leave a comment and like and subscribe so that other people can see these videos. Thank you so much. Say bye, Bampo.